Great Scott. Great Scott. Great Scott. Hello, everyone, and thank you for watching another great episode of Great Scott. I'm Scotty V. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about Man of Steel. Now, I've already talked about this, but it's come up again recently, and almost daily it comes up on the uh, on the Facebooks and the uh, Twitters and the people trying to continuously parade us with their point about how the Zack Snyder slash Man of Steel Superman and upcoming Batman vs. Superman uh, or the Superman sequel of sorts is not our Man of Steel is not the Superman you know and love, is not the Superman that we've all grown up with and learned about. I wanted to remind everyone that in one of his initial appearances in the Superman comic book, Zod and friends were killed by Superman. And they weren't killed in battle, they weren't killed in a moment of desperation, they weren't killed when it had to be done, there was no sense of urgency. The trio had already lost their powers. And Superman, in a moment of judge, jury, and executioner, decided that they were far too dangerous to leave alive, even without their powers, and he had to murder them with a box of kryptonite. He opens it up, they die, begging, please spare us, blah, blah, blah. He does not spare them, he kills them. Later on, he exiles himself into space, goes crazy because he can't believe he's taken some lives, and then comes back as the Guardian, and then decides to be Superman again when he's able to clear his head or when he's able to remember who he was, because he lost himself in making that decision. Much is similar in Man of Steel. Now, we haven't seen the continuation of this story, and maybe some of the editing is questionable because they kind of go to a humorous scene right after it happens. But when Superman is fighting Zod, and he's in that position where Zod's about to immediately kill a family, and not only that... The city has been partially destroyed, which is another thing people continue to complain about and blame Superman for. This is a young Superman who just became Superman, who is fighting an army of his equals, who are all more powerful than any human, and who are all able to break out of any imprisoning device Superman might be able to put him in, at least that exists. And so far, he hasn't had that much access to his planet's technologies other than the one ship. And so he would be unaware if there was a Phantom Zone projector or a way to remove their powers, which I've always called a Donner MacGuffin and hated it from the beginning. Even though Lester was the director of Superman, the script came from something that was created by Donner. And in the Donner script, he turns back time in both movies, which is crazy. And uh, luckily, we didn't get to see it twice. But when he removes their powers at the end of Superman 2 because he lost his own powers earlier on and had this crystal that he was able to get them back with, it's a lot of just made-up crap that they said, well, we got to do this because how else is he going to defeat three of himself? Um, and he realizes it when he's fighting in Metropolis. And no, the destruction in that movie isn't as great as the destruction in Man of Steel, but I would submit that the destruction in Man of Steel is much more realistic. If you had 20 soldiers who had been trained to destroy and who had been trained to recreate Krypton and didn't care about Earthlings, there would be very little one Superman could do to stop them. It's not like he could say, well, hang on, let's move this away from where they are. And I realize people say, but Superman always moves the battle away from Metropolis. I think if he could, he would. But it was very urgent. And then and Zod wasn't going to go... Oh, okay, well, we'll go fight on the moon so no one gets hurt. Zod didn't care about people getting hurt. Zod was going to destroy the whole planet. I've already argued all of this, but it came up recently, and it made me think about a few things, and that's why I wanted to reiterate. Things like this cartoon here. Uh, the Superman you know and love, it says, and you got, You'll have to kill me! It's the Zod from the Man of Steel thing. And it's a Superman in his baby blue Christopher Reeve outfit from the earlier movies where he says, No, no, I don't do that. And then in the next scene, we see the Zack Snyder Superman and Zod saying, You'll have to kill me, snap. Sure, whatever. And he looks sheepish about it. This is complete bull. I mean, if you watched the movie, you see that when Superman does what he has to do in that moment, what he hates doing, what he regrets doing, he begs Zod to stop. He says, please, please stop. Don't do this. Let's come together on some sort of an agreement. Let's figure out a way we can all live, you know, together. Zod won't stop. And, and not only will he not stop in that moment, but Superman knows 
That if he lets them go, it's going to continue. More things are going to get destroyed. More people are going to be in danger. And the next time Zod might have to jump on him. And he does what he immediately regrets and regretted before doing it. And then he falls to his knees. He screams. He's clearly teary. He's very emotional. And he hates that he had to do it. And he's going to regret it for the rest of his life. Then they cut to a scene that's kind of comedic. And so people said he didn't really care. Maybe there should have been some more time there. I don't know. But they wanted to get that next scene in. But I think it was clear that it wasn't Superman saying, oh, sure, whatever. And just snapping his neck willy-nilly and not caring. I don't even know if he knew he could do that. It was just something he had to do in desperation. And I bring this up because recently I was berated once again for posting on a comment thread where people were posting about how terrible Man of Steel was and how it's not Superman and how they hated it. And and I always come in and say, well, you know, there were these precedents. You know, he killed the Zod people in the comics. You know, uh, uh, he clearly regretted it. And then I get set, I get attacked. Scott, why are you so defensive? You know, you don't have to say anything when people are uh, attacking a movie. And, you know, I thought after years of, and this kind of happened, I, I posted a Walking Dead picture on the Superman homepage Facebook page uh, because I'm one of the administrators, not because I thought I could get away with it. I just wasn't thinking. I was excited. Uh, I thought some of the people who also liked the homepage would like to see that it was coming back on TV, and I was excited about it. And immediately I got attacked by people. How dare you? Taking advantage of being administrator? Okay. I'm sorry. I took it down. But I would have thought that after all these years of talking to you guys and, and hopefully having people who are viewing some of these videos when we put up the Speedy Bulletin each week, I thought maybe I'd have some leeway or some respect or, or some admiration from people out there. But it seems like um, either people don't know, you know, this guy who attacked me for defending the movie when he was attacking it to begin with, a negative post, and I was trying to inject some sense and some logic into it. It, it, he maybe doesn't even know about my, my connection to the Superman homepage, which is the most comprehensive and best Superman site out there, bar none, including DC, that doesn't put a lot of input into every single hero. You know, their, their page on Superman is very small. They don't have the amount of information. You know, so for me, doing this thing on here and having a lot of people to talk to and having a lot of, you know, I would have thought that maybe some would say, well, you're kind of an expert on Superman, or you kind of know a lot about Superman, or we're going to take your word for it, or, or you know, I don't agree, I don't like the movie, but, but, you know, thanks for your input, it makes a little more sense now, or something as opposed to me just being a peon. And not that I'm any different than anybody else, we're all fans, but I just seem like I get a lot more disrespect than I get people, you know, understanding what I'm trying to say. So it bothered me a little bit, so I wanted to bring it up again, because this whole thing... I got no stake in Man of Steel, but I liked the movie a lot, and I think it was the best realistic portrayal on screen that we've seen of Superman. And I think that there's a lot of precedent for what happened, and I do wish that the filmmakers didn't decide to go controversial, but it's not like a lot of these fanboys say it is, where Superman will just snap next willy-nilly, and I hear it all the time, like, well, let's just hope he doesn't snap Batman's neck! <laughs> yes, very funny, but... Clearly, he's not going to go around doing that. That's not his thing. Thanks for watching, everybody. And remember, always look up in the sky.